This is the new Viltrox AF 27mm f1.2 Nikon Z mount lens. I am super keen to test and review this lens. A lot of photographers are saying it's one of the best value f1.2 lenses ever. More on that next. Just a quick thank you to the team at Viltrox for sending me out this lens to test and review. But Viltrox aren't paying me to do this video, so any sort of findings or opinions I've got of this lens are mine alone. Opening the box, the lens comes well packaged and you get your manual, warranty card, lens pouch, front and rear lens caps and lens hood. Initial impressions of the lens is that it felt well built and I was happy with the size and weight and balance in my hand. I noticed it has a programmable FN button as well as an autofocus switch and another switch on the other side. This switch in the off position lets you use the external aperture ring very smoothly and silently which is good for video. And in the on position it gives you audible definitive clicks when stepping through the apertures. This actually saves you from accidentally bumping the aperture ring. You can switch that aperture ring to full automatic so the camera does all the hard work for you when selecting apertures. It's an APS-C lens and weighs in at approximately 560 grams, has a 67 mm filter thread and has an aperture range from f1.2 to f16. The minimum focusing distance is 28 centimeters. You also get a USB-C port at the rear of the lens for future firmware updates. And if you want to know just how easy it is to update the firmware on these Viltrox lenses, I'll leave you a video I made showing you how to do it at the end of this one. This Viltrox AF 27mm f1.2 Nikon Z mount lens is the second ultra large prime lens now available in the Viltrox Pro flagship series, joining the very popular 75mm f1.2. I've already reviewed this Viltrox 75mm f1.2 lens and in short, I was super impressed with it. And if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll leave it at the end of this video so you can check it out a little bit later on. Now with this review, I'm actually gonna do things slightly different to what I'd normally do. Instead, I'll be sharing my samples and experience with this lens, talking you through the images. My first thoughts for this 27mm f1.2 lens is that it would be amazing for weddings and portraits, but that's a given really, considering I pretty much covered that angle in the Viltrox 75mm f1.2 lens review. So in this review, I'm primarily going to be focusing more on low light images, as well as other images, checking out the quality of bokeh in the background. And I'll also be using the lens for video in a cinematic style. I'm gonna be testing this lens on my Nikon Z7 full frame camera. It's a 45 megapixel camera. Now, a couple of things will happen. Firstly, when you drop an APS-C lens onto a full frame camera, you end up getting about half your megapixels. And the way you work that out is you take the megapixels from your camera, in other words, this is 45 megapixels, you divide that by 1.5, that gives you an answer, and then you divide that answer by 1.5 again. So this ends up with 20 megapixels. So at the time of making this video, the Nikon APS-C cameras are all 20 megapixels anyway, so I'm not gonna be really missing out on any sort of image quality. Also with the lens, it has a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent of about 40 millimeters, or 40.5 millimeters to be exact, when you add the 1.5 crop factor. Okay, let's rip into it. Oh, and at the time of making this review, it's Christmas here, so I thought I'd take advantage of some of the light displays at night. Just before I start looking at some of these photos, I need to tell you something. This has been one of the worst Christmases in terms of weather here we've ever had. There's been absolutely horrendous storms, hail, wind, floods, you name it, it's all happened here. But that didn't stop me from going out with this lens and camera and getting these shots. And the first one you're seeing is walking around the neighborhood I had an umbrella here and I had the Z7 in this hand. You can see already at f1.2, it gives you an amazing picture, but I'm gonna push in and I'm gonna show you even more. You can just look at those snowflakes. They're a projected image onto the wall of this house. Incredible the sharpness out of this lens. Now, one thing that really stood out is because I was shooting at a slower shutter speed, have a look at this street light and it's captured the pouring rain. So it's actually really given this image quite a nice look when you've got all this rain coming down through that street light. The next shot I wanted to try out was using just a slower shutter speed because I wanted to capture some of the rain that was falling down in the background between this street light and this plant. 
I focused on the tree in the foreground. Let me just push into those leaves where I've got that focus point. Look how sharp the lens is around those leaves where I focused. In the background you can see those raindrops coming down because of the slow shutter and the light is coming through them. With this next image I was going for that really contrasty strong street photography look and I focused on the tree just on the leaves right near that light. Now you can see there's a bit of noise. I've actually added noise in post-production on this shot because I like it when I use black and white. Look at the slow shutter speed and look at the rain absolutely pelting down. I got drenched on this night but it was kind of worth going out that night because I did get a couple of cool shots. So the next day after that storm we had a very brief glimpse of sun and I got out into my bird garden and started taking some shots of some flowers. This one is of some yellow kangaroo paws and I focused on this flower right in about the middle of the image. I love how the lens has really picked out the definition on these flower petals even showing each individual hair on each petal. Now this is wide open at f1.2, just look at that sublime bokeh in the background, wow. And even in the foreground, some of the flowers in the foreground are out of focus as well. This next shot was taken at f1.4 and I'm focused dead smack right in the middle of this flower. So let's just push in and you can see it is tack sharp right in the center of that flower. And again, you get the most sublime bokeh all around that flower, both in the foreground and the background. This is another shot of a grevillea flower. I focus right in the center of the flower. Let's push in and have a look how sharp it is. Look at that. Even on the thinnest part of that flower, it's actually got little microscopic hairs on those little tiny maroon colored prongs. But again, just look at the beautiful bokeh happening in the background with this lens. So that afternoon, after I got those shots of the flowers in the garden, another storm came which forced me inside. So I thought I'd get around my Christmas tree and get a few ornaments. Now all these shots around the tree were taken at f1.2 but look at how sharp the definition is on this bear's face when I push in. That's my reflection in those bear's eyes. It's an absolutely stunning lens for low light. You know when you've got things like weddings and events and you're doing table settings or bouquets or flower arrangements. This is the type of images you can get. Here's another ornament on my tree. Again I'll push in and I'll show you how sharp it is just on the center there and that is actually my reflection on that center green strip. And one thing I should mention with this lens too, having that 40 millimeter equivalent focal length, it really is so diverse in what you can do. And also having that 28 centimeter minimum focus distance, I can get really close into objects. And when you're doing portraits, it gives you the most beautiful mid-range shots Okay, so the next test I wanted to set up, I wanted to get some fairy lights and put them behind these candles because I really wanted to see what the bokeh was like wide open at f1.2. So with this shot, I'm focused bang smack on that foreground wick on that candle. Look at the bokeh to begin with. You get that really beautiful, nice round ball type shape on your bokeh. Just over on the left though, you can just see that those balls are just starting to go into that cat's eye type look. I'm just gonna push in on that wick here. Look at the definition in that flame. I don't know what blows my mind more is how sharp this lens is or how cheap this lens is for the type of images that you get. This shot here I just set up with Santa in the foreground. I focused on Santa's eye and I tried some lights and some ornaments in the background. There's actually some cracks in the ceramics on that beard in Santa's face. I didn't even realize they were there until I saw this photo. So one thing you've got to remember is that this is all handheld and it's all natural light taken at f1.2. So on this next shot I decided to add some candles to that previous shot and I focused on the foreground candle. Let me just push into that. Look at the amazing definition on that flame and on the wick of the candle. It's just so amazingly clear. How sharp is it? And then look at the beautiful bokeh that you get in the background. So all of this is lit via those small fairy lights and just those candles. So after Christmas was over, I found out that the local football club was having some fireworks. So I headed over there with the camera and I ended up getting this shot to begin with. Now I've turned it black and white. Again, I've made it really grainy. And you can see that this football ground was lit up by these six floodlights. The thing that appealed to me was the way these floodlights were beaming down onto these people. And I thought that'll make a really good black and white shot. Now you'll notice too, I'm back away from the crowd. And the reason for that, shooting at 40 millimeters, I needed to get back to get a bit of room in the sky so I could see the fireworks. So one thing I should mention too with these shots, they were all taken handheld. What I did 
was I used a post next to me and I kind of like jarred myself and held the camera in tight to my body, taking shots with a slow shutter speed. Now you'll notice with this shot in the background, it looks like firework smoke. That's not, that's actually a huge lightning storm coming in. So I'm pretty glad that these fireworks were over pretty quickly. So one thing that stood out too, is that I can also see stars. If you look up in the top left corner, there's stars above the clouds, even over towards the middle, more stars just above that cloud. So of all the fireworks shots that I got on that night, this was the one I was happiest with just because of the framing and then I got the fireworks spot on. And you can see that cloud, that menacing cloud coming in the background. And just let me push in here again, look up the top of the frame, groupings of stars right above the cloud. So impressed with this lens. And then towards the middle of the shot, you've got more fireworks happening right next to the light post there with the people in the foreground. Okay, so that's the stills. Let's go and check out some video. Just to give you an idea of the bokeh out of this Filtrox 27 millimeter F 1.2 lens, this is what it's like using it on the Nikon Z7 and I'm shooting 4K 25 frames a second. I'm at 1 50th of a second, I'm wide open at F 1.2 and I've got an ISO of 100. You can see how amazing the background looks but the thing is what I've had to do is I've had to use a variable ND on the front of the lens. It's a three stop ND. When I was out in bright sunshine before, I had to use a seven stop just to keep those same settings, those same video settings on the Z7. Here's a little montage clip using the Viltrox 27 mm F 1.2 on my Nikon Z7 with my gimbal and variable ND filter system. If you are interested to know more about the gimbal and filter system I'm using, I'll leave you links to those videos in the description box below. I'm a little bit excited because astro season is just around the corner here in my part of the world and I'm going to be using this lens for an astrophotography video. So make sure you subscribe and keep your eyes open for that video. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you want any more information on this lens, I've left you a link in the video description box below. Never stop creating and I'll see you next time.